it has awakened in me more than anger or hate. I, I don't think I feel any of it. What it has awakened in me is like a realignment of what truly matters in life. And what truly matters in life ever since I've been a kid is create, creating. As long as I can create, whether it's freaking painting using uh, uh, pasta, seashell pasta or whatever, or it is painting or it is doing concept art for movies, I think I'll be happy, you know. like I was a completely different human being at this time. <laughs> so much happened. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking about like how much has happened in the last four years, like three years, comparatively to last three decades. <laughs> oh, there's that too. Yeah. So so overall, between the 10 years and those, and those few years, it's been 20 years. <laughs> it feels like 20 years. Yeah. So, so like five years until 2020 and then another 20 so exactly. 25 <laughs> exactly that's how it's calculated nowadays yeah yeah we age like motherfuckers <laughs> oh, once again look at our hair look at our face yeah 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 i hope when we're 90 like... we'll do another one of those <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be in two years <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly uh yeah how's life been for you man um, it's been i mean good. We, 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 yeah. we we talk we talk to each other like time to time like texting and and and, and messages but like not really you know like um, in the long extent like usually just memes like how are you doing like how's family all that stuff you know yeah I, I would say it's been good uh, you know one thing that can describe how I've been feeling you know but this whole life to be honest is uh, I see my girls you know and and. I have two girls. I, one is seven, the other one is nine, and they're both extremely different. The young one is like my wife, the older one is like me. And when <laughs> I see the older one, you know, spending her days painting, I'm like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> you know, that, maybe that explains a little bit my whole life. If I feel that way, you know, uh, that tells you a little bit. Uh, I, I feel uh, the artist's life is a massive cross to bear, you know, and I'm complaining, I'm sure there's many other jobs that are much harder, but uh, it's uh, especially with everything and all the changes that are happening in our world on so many levels, I feel it's uh, being able to do the art you want and you love and keep creating is a, is a constant adaptation, basically, you know, and it, you're like at some point Matthew it's... McConaughey in fucking interstellar <laughs> that's exactly in right act. <laughs> that's exactly it that's exactly it yeah. it's it's constant yeah. adaptation you know but uh but there's advantages to that too you know it, it makes for forces you to be very creative that's for sure yeah yeah you can't help it you can't help it like creativity once you have it in your dna you, you cannot get rid of it you just need to <laughs> need to create that's exactly right yeah and like yeah. I said, that's the cross to bear. Yeah. Yeah. I've read a, st I, I mean, I'm not sure if the statistic is real or not. And I can't remember. I need to find out where it was and if it's real, actually. Because <laughs> like I, I bring those things up and I never check them. <laughs> Might be some fucking <laughs> trolls. Well, thankfully, like... <laughs> we're not a, it's not a New York Times interview right now. So thankfully, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this article is saying that only 5% of people have an urge to create stuff. And then the 95% wow. of people just want to consume. So wow. that was like an interesting insight. I need to, again, if it's true, that's kind of crazy, right? Because that kind of puts, puts a lot of things in perspective. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, and to me, I mean, and, I mean, it's a really good timing that you, we, you contacted me is because I've had kind of that awakening about myself just, I mean, I'm 50 now. I turned 50 in September, you know. And I had that awakening just a few yeah, months ago. Yeah, you don't ago. look 50, dude. You don't look 50. You look much <laughs> younger. You're a young buck. It's only your your gray beard is like... Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's selling it, selling it, yeah. But it's only yeah. been like a few months that I've understood 
because I took a long break, you know, uh, uh, over the new company I work at, you know, uh, I'm more in a management position right now. Uh, and I was, I didn't want to look at my Wacom for a year. And, and I was like, this is so sad. You know, why have I come to that? You know, why ha has it come to the point where I don't want to draw? I don't want to paint. I, and I was extremely sad about it. You know, but I was like, okay, mm. this is the life I have now. This is what's going on. And then after a year, you know, and, and Christmas, and I got hit suddenly with like an, that urge you're talking about, that urge to create. Yeah. It just like hit me like a train out of <laughs> nowhere. And I was like, well, hello, uh, how are you doing? You know, it's like suddenly I found my old self again after a year of not doing anything. So, so it's very good timing. You contacted me now. Yeah. Hello, darkness, my old friend, man. That's, That's exactly what's up. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for those who don't know, I mean, you've been, you've been an absolute veteran of the industry. Like I remember seeing your work like prior like well i discovered your work on cision forums yeah that was 2003 yeah. just to put things in perspective that's like 20, 20 21 years ago dude yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. i know you worked in the industry like many many years prior yeah I started young. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah remind me what what was your first like because you, you did a lot oh of video God. game stuff. My you first know? project? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're talking my first shipped project or my first yeah. project? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like something that came out and was like, this is okay. my portfolio piece, you know? Something that I saw the light of day. Uh... <laughs> That's a good one to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I'm proud of talking about. That's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> it just narrows down. Like, we so went from here from to here. <laughs> <laughs> so the first uh, project that, that was kind of known was Turok Evolution. Uh, and that was, uh, that was uh, at uh, Acclaim at the time. Uh, that was my first job in the US. And, and that's something that I understood clearly when I was working in Europe. I understood very, at some point, relatively quickly that if I wanted to do something that shipped, I had to go to America, especially mm -hmm. at the time, you know, the video game industry is not at all what it is today. I mean, it was 30 years ago. The industry was yeah. full of charlatans, you know, people, <laughs> people taking bags of money of the company and, and going to Brazil, you know, it's stuff like that, <laughs> stories like that. I have quite a few, uh, I'm not going to go into that, but, but that was the time, you know, so. So I understood I had to go to America in order to, to do something, you know. Uh, so Turok was the first one uh, we released. And then I had as well. Is that when you yeah. moved to America too? Yeah, yeah. I moved, I moved to Texas at the time in Austin, you know. Uh, I love wow. That. I love, still to this day, I love Austin. I don't live there anymore, but I love Austin. Yeah. yeah. And then, Have and you then been to I've, Austin uh, lately? I haven't been in a while, but I saw Austin before it was anything and then right. after and i saw the whole transition and it's really like it's shocking to see how cities develop how like lives change how like urbanism changes like as soon as money comes in the game like cities yeah. just transform like right away there was a time where in austin downtown you only had like three-legged dogs and cockroaches that was it <laughs> Truth, truth. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. yeah. I was coming that from London like a lot of fun. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Wow. So it's yeah. like almost been, what, like almost 30 years for yeah. you. Yeah. 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 It's more crazy. than 30 years in the business. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still alive. How, <laughs> how was, like, I wonder how was that move? Because, like, people don't realize that moving across the pond. Or like move like just moving cities is difficult, right? But moving yes. moving countries is difficult, and then moving to a different continent that's like a whole other game, right? That's correct. It was a uh, I was ready for it to be honest. You know, I was extremely ambitious when I was young. I just I just was so hungry for work, success, and working on big game projects and. And I was ready. And every time I made big moves, you know, I think I was really ready at the time uh, mm -hmm. when I did that move from Europe. So at the time, 
I had worked on at various companies uh, and projects, uh, very small projects. And then I was uh, offered a job uh, then at Acclaim, you know. And, uh, and uh, at the time, as, when I knew that I was hired at Acclaim and the visa process was going to take time, I spent all my cash just, I went snowboarding for five months, <laughs> like a bum, you know, with like in my car, sleeping in my car and stuff like that. And then, so I arrived in the US, I was ready for it. I had nothing, I had no money, I had nothing. I just arrived and I was like, I'm ready for a new part of my life. I knew it was like a, something big was opening for me, you know? So, hmm. so it was, it was easy, I would say. And I had help from people that welcomed me in Austin, you know, at the time there was a, a painter named Roger Barcelon. He passed away just a few years back. And he took me in really like a, like a dad almost, you know, him and his wife. Uh, they took me in like, a, like parents, you know. Yeah. So I had yeah, a lot of friends awesome. that helped me. Yeah. 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 I, it's, it's funny you say that, you know, how gaming industry used to be back then. Like even, even when I, because I started like technically 2004 is like when I started actually working in the industry and it was just like it was just like you know what it was it's like fake jewelry it's like it looks bling bling <laughs> very shiny <laughs> that's exactly right yeah <laughs> then you get to the yeah. company like oh your, our payment's gonna be late i was like what <laughs> what is yeah, happening <laughs> that, that describes the old game industry perfectly this is it yeah this was it yeah it changed Missing dramatically payments, now stolen for 1ks I've seen it all. I've seen it all. Yeah. Yeah. It changed dramatically. It's now, it's now just so worldwide. Um, I don't think there's a continent that, that, that has it better. I don't, I don't think. No. And I was shocked. I was shocked when I, uh, because I just did the move back a year ago to video games and, and, uh, how humane it has become is really shocking. You know, in the, in the two thousands, oh, you know, well, it's truth, truthfully, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, there was a time where it was basically slavery. I mean, I remember doing seven days a week work job sometimes, you know, and just madness, you know. And yeah, so things have changed a lot. There's so much respect nowadays for artists, for the artistry. For I mean, of course, there's always horror stories, you know. But overall, there's yeah. like a respect, you know. Yeah, where do you think it's going? Because like, I mean this year started with like mass layoffs pretty much everywhere in the gaming yeah. company. In I mean, the gaming talking companies. about horror stories, that, that's horror stories. I mean, yeah, greed is greed, you know? <laughs> so, you know, you have companies that during during the years of, uh, of COVID, you know, made billions over billions over billions, you know? And yeah. then now that we're not in COVID, you know, they're firing people in order to Re reestablish uh, cash in the bank, you know, and that's anything but humane, you know. Uh, so, so it has taken a different format. I think now you have much bigger corporations, and when they sneeze, everybody feels it, you know, and all over yeah. the world. That's true. That's true. I think I think there was a quite a bit of overhiring going on too, and I've, sure. I I wonder if you if you had the same experience, but I've been working in a couple of game studios. And uh, in all of them, I started in this kind of garage form. So it was it was it was Crytek, though two big ones. It was Crytek and Naughty Dog. Those are like two big big ones. I've spent most of my career in, like yep. almost ten years combined. And when I started at Crytek, it was like fifty people. Like the whole team was fifty people in this small Bavarian town, Coburg. It was like two houses appropriated to be basically a studio. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was, it was, and then they grew to like 400 people in like a few years. Yeah. Right. And then the same thing happened with Naughty Dog. When I joined Naughty Dog it was like a hundred, hundred, hundreds, hundred with a change. And when I left it, it was like triple the size and like two projects can, you know, co 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 currently. I wonder if it's just, the companies growing for sake of growing and over hiring, thinking that hiring is the is the way to go to fill in the I mean, the, the gap. There's different perspective, you know. There are definitely financial consideration when you do that, you know. The thing, let's yeah. say, let's say the CEO of a company decides his plan is to say, well, I'm going to ride, I'm going to serve that company for five years, you know, and then I'm going to sell, you know. 
a lot of yeah. CEOs plan things that way, you know. So then after 10 years or five, 10 years, you know, the more people you hire, when you the value of the company is much higher, you know. Uh, and so that I means you have a parachute that's much bigger. So in general, that's how it goes. You know, you have like a, a financial decision that is made, you know, and the future development decision that is made so that when the person who owns the company leaves, you know, they sell it for the highest price possible, you know. Yeah, especially if they go public or sell to like a, a distributor or a yeah. publisher. Yeah. Yeah. We all remember Blizzard before it was acquired yeah. by Activision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's how. It's, it's wild. And it, it's what you know, it's wild. The wild thing that I notice is that, I mean, you only notice it when you get older, but it's like the, the span of five or six years. Like when you're young, it's like, oh my God, five years is such a, like, it's so much time, right? And then five years pass by like a blink of an eye and you're like, whoa, what the fuck happened, you know? Um, yep. But it feels like you to get, me... the faster it goes too. Yeah, it's yeah. true. That's true. It's, the time is flying. But um, but I, I think I'm like noticing this kind of pattern of... I, I gotta, I gotta talk about this. We can, we can kind of evolve this to film industry because that pattern happens in film industry a lot. And I think it happened during our time for the most part, our time in film, let's call it this way. Yeah. Is that the studios start with passion for great product, right? And then the managers take over <laughs> well, who are I mean, like it's a... not really artists, you know? Yeah, one well, of the things that we you know we we have felt kind of a microcosm of what the movie industry has been. The movie industry has been around for you know, hundred years now, something like yeah. this. You know, uh, so it's when it started, it was mostly a lot of very passionate people. You know, that yeah. maybe started making coffee and then went on to become producers and or directors or set designers or whatever. You know, and and as time has gone by and globalization has happened, now it's become more of a I mean, it's it's MBA and lawyers, people that own these kind of big companies, and and the bottom line is is the bottom line is the main thing is just making cash, 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 cash. You know, yeah. uh, So, and we arrived at the point, you know, you and I in that movie industry where where it was already like this, you know, and it was already shifting, you know, where budgets were getting lower, where work had was becoming more difficult, you know, and and you had to fight for every. Basically, every time you jump from project to another, you have, as you know, we talked about it. You have to fight for your paycheck to be to be reflective of your abilities. You know, you have, always yeah. have to prove yourself. You know, and and it's getting worse and worse. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, I've de definitely noticed like the pressure has been there in last, like especially last two or three years, like since COVID. Definitely a massive amount of pressure to lower cost. Um, when was you joined the film industry a little, a little sooner than I did? What was the first film you worked on? The first film I worked on was Tron Legacy. Tron Legacy, yeah, I remember. I had done that. actually. I had done a, work for that, dude. I had done a comic book for. Um, I had done a comic book for I Am Legend. Actually, I'd done two comic books for I Am Legend. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. When was that? That was like obviously before. Uh, Just before they Tron, adapted so, it, right? Yeah. yeah. Dude, mm. I remember when I saw it, when you released the Tron stuff, I was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> that was crazy. It was just crazy yeah. to look at. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, mm. Some of some I of my young. favorite work from you, for sure. Thank you. I um, was young. Yeah. That was uh, Joe, Joe Kos Kosinski, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I love him. Joe Kosinski's Great project. Director. Yeah. And then we, I th did, you worked on the sequel, right? Uh, I think we were all... I worked on a bunch were... of sequels, but I didn't work on the one that's being made right now. Just no, 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 yeah, but the, yeah, the one yeah. that was canceled. I worked on three I mean... versions after after the first one. <laughs> so we so we by proxy them... worked together on 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 that one. Yeah, so three um, of them got it was canceled. With Darren, correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Darren's amazing too. That was uh, that was yeah. such a good time. Yeah, I think you were already in uh in like you already left California by by that time. Yeah. I think. Yes, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I joined film. I left. I left Naughty Dog to work on Ghost in the Shell. That was my kind of foray. Ah, I but the remember Ghost, now. But the but the Ghost it was it's funny because the Ghost in the Shell 
started and then like literally a month and got paused like what the fuck they do <laughs> yeah that's the movie industry yeah yeah that, that's a pretty brutal lesson to learn from coming from yeah. games yes yeah. yeah but but literally the same time um other production designer I used to work with, uh, like by proxy, Owen Patterson reached out. Was like, "Hey, we're doing Captain America." I was like, "Yeah, yes, please." You know? Yeah. And that Once was you're like in my... and you've done a good job, yeah, it's a chain reaction after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You make connections. Um, for me, it was. I I think like three or four. Three or four projects in, it stopped being about like, oh, this is this is a great project idea or a great film or a great script. It was like, who is the production designer? <laughs> like, yeah, is it is it what someone I is know? It? And it's yeah, which team is that? Yeah, yeah, is it a fun team to work with? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's no doubt that. I mean, looking back, I mean, all the projects I worked on, all the projects I work on like compared to like the importance that my family has in my life, you know, is like a drop, you know? Uh, so what matters is truly the people I was with, you know, the memories I have with. And I still communicate almost on a daily basis with all the people I worked with in the movie industry, because I love those guys to death, you know, and we went through battles together and, and it's such amazing memories. I miss it. I miss, there was an addiction to the movie industry where it was almost like, and I've never taken it, but crack cocaine. Where you're like everything is intense, <laughs> everything is in a hurry, everything has to happen now, you know. And because of that, your 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 level is like goes tenfold or just over a month period, you know. And there's something extremely addicting to that. And there's also something extremely destructive about that, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a very very kind of fast paced. We gotta move fast. We don't have a lot of budget. There has to be, this has to be done, that has to be done. Um, yeah. It's you not true. I mean, they have a huge amount of budget, but not for you. <laughs> yeah, but not for you. <laughs> not for you. And in credits, you're behind the, 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 the guy who drove the fucking food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, hierarchy, you know, important. Yeah. Food is yeah, more yeah. important than, than, I've always said, you know, and that's the thing. Food is like, more important. Art. Yeah, the concept <laughs> art. It is, you know. And the things that I've always said, you know, when I give classes or whatever, I ask people, "What do you think concept art is important for?" And everybody's like, "Inspiration and uh, uh, to give ideas to the director." I'm like, wrong. The only reason why there are concept artists is to save money. That's the only reason. Yeah. If tomorrow we are replaced by other things that do concept art that don't cost money, we will be replaced. And, I, and I'm very sad that I was so right. Yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. I did not look at, at that role from this perspective because I used to think like, yes, like we are bringing the inspiration and all this kind of stuff. And I think it, it rings true to very occasional cases of people who are exceptional at coming up with amazing ideas and executing I them. I agree. Right. But for the most part, I truly believe that I mean, you know this better than I do, but remember how small the industry was when you started? Like sure, yeah. Knowing another artist was like almost unheard of, right? Like you True, would know only yeah. like a bunch of people. Yeah, and um, imagine before us, you know, when yeah. there was Moebius, you know, Ron Cobb, and, and yeah. there was like five guys, you know, at the time, you know, and then we have one project, you know, Moebius worked on a handful of projects. You know, yeah. yeah. If you're an artist and you knew the like at least knew the craft a bit, like in the '80s, you would be working on James Cameron movies, basically. You could, yeah. Like you could. off the street. Like yeah, I, I think I the mean, difficulty would have been to be known at the time. You know. Yeah, it's it, yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't know. I I spoke with you know Paul Osimo, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you, yeah. you worked with him before. Yeah, yeah. He was like hired to make props, like off the street. Like for, I think it was the the sphere or the abyss or something. That's like awesome. Like on the James Cameron movie. Like my first movie was James Ca James Cameron movie. Like what the fuck, bro? That's amazing. Yeah. Like right, right now, place, it's right just time. unheard of, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. timing is everything, as always, right? Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, but the industry like changed so dramatically, like with the art station when art station started to, to come up, and like it was a CG hub before, right? 
Yep, CG Hub. Yeah. Yeah. I just <laughs> went, just like, we're shutting down, like, other, overnight. It was gone. <laughs> just oh, turned God. Off. <laughs> it's like a drama. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, we, we spoke about Seijun forums, and that's, like, where all the artists were. So you basically, if you were during that time, it was, like, Craig, Craig Mullins was there, like, the speed painting forums. And then, like, all the other people were, were joining just, just to be in that speed, yeah. speed painting and, and, and drawing. And, that changed and then my everyone, life. yeah, it absolutely yeah. did. And it's, it's, it's funny because everyone who was in that thread now, like, we all know those people, like, in the industry, right? <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. All of them, basically, you know, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, all of them. Um, it was such a it small was really group. Like a, now a seed, it was really a seed of something massive, you know. Yeah. I still keep yeah. all those speed paintings. I, lo I love them to death, you know, <laughs> all those speed paintings. Yeah, I, I just, same. I have such same. a melancholic memory about them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta have the you gotta have the archive of the all, of, like all the work yeah. you've done. You know, yeah. just keep Not it. Just like, it's it. a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. no way. Yeah. It actually makes me want to post like some of like the really really old shitty stuff. It's like, I have so much pride, pride of it. So much pride. Yeah. You know, quite. And, I, 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 yeah. Go ahead. So, sorry. Go ahead. No, and I was gonna say, and Craig Medins was the king of it all. You know, we were all his minions, basically. Yeah, he's the granddaddy of yeah. all art, all digital art. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to say that quite ironically, all those old shitty speed paintings are probably more valuable than like all those amazing rendered art that we do now, you know? I fully agree. Fully yeah. agree. In the limitations yeah. and the, yeah. What do you, like, so, I mean, obviously it kind of leads to the the big elephant in the room, which is the AI. Sure. Um, yeah. What is your take on this all? Like based on, I mean, when was it the first time it kind of made a massive splash? It was like 2022, right? It was like yeah, almost two I years mean, ago. I say three, three years ago, I would say. Yeah. That's when yeah. it hit me. That's when I had the big realization. That's when it hit me. I saw the, the, the writing mid journey, role, right? Uh, it was a stable diffusion for me. Okay. Uh, okay. That arrived before mid journey. And, uh, it was kind of like the the hippie version, you know, the free that you could find and install. It was a nightmare to install, and I and I tested it because I was like, if something is going to take my job, I want to understand how it works, you know. Um, yeah. And yes, as soon as I tried it, I was like, yeah, this is game over for for a big part of the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I had a I had a same realization. That was two years ago, mid journey when it came out in the summer. Where you could join the beta, the beta on like Discord, yeah, and start like, I mean, myself and Ash were just going back and forth about this, like, dude, like, what the fuck? And that was just like, a sh like compared to now, it was just like, you were impressed by that, like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, that's you true. know. Um, so it asks the question, where is it going? Yeah, have you seen the Sora release? Yeah, I, I have. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I mean, where every it's time going. there's a new release, every time there's a new release, and that's the thing that's funny is that you know, a lot of art director, person designers know that maybe using AI, you know, they're like, yeah, I'm not hiring concept artists anymore or whatever, you know. Yeah. The thing they don't realize is that it's coming for them too. By the way. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's coming for everybody. It's coming for everybody. That's yeah. that's what, and that's you know, the first post I did on Instagram about AI, that's what I said. I said, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm worried about my job, sure, but. I'm more worried about what the army is going to do with that. I'm more worried about what countries are going to do with that. I'm more worried about what dictators are going to do with that than my job currently. Yes, it's important, but yeah. there are a lot of more worrying things coming with AI, you know, and positive things. Yeah, I think the the most. Uh... So I, I had I, I was speaking with uh, Steven Zapata. I was like a year and a half ago. I was like right when the updated stable diffusion came out, uh, which had like really amazing looking characters. And uh, his assessments were like spot on. It's like, because I asked him, where do you think it's going? And he's like, he was something something along the lines of like, I think I think it's going to go beyond people just prompting. It's just like, it's going to be like TikTok in a way where 
it reads your behavior and then feeds you automatically with generated stuff as you're looking at it, right? Yeah. And then whatever your expression, like face expression is going to be, whether you liked it or not, is just going to adjust yeah. and automatically create like kind of your own yeah. dystopian I mean, reality. <laughs> yeah, and it, that's true. You know, and the way it's going, I mean, uh, having you will be able probably to have different filters on any movie you want to watch or any game you want to watch or any yeah any skin you can skin your own game you can skin your own with whatever your face everywhere or whatever fantasy you may have but the thing is that to me the biggest thing that's coming with ai is that it's there was a split in our industry already as persons we as artists we were split there was a part oh, of yeah. us that was artistic and a part of us that was industrial it's always been like that whether it's mm -hmm. when we had to deliver speed paintings at a crazy rate, you know, or whether we had to create like a bunch of 3D environments, you know, it's always faster, faster, faster in order to answer production. Okay. And yeah. that split is becoming less and less tenable. You know, we are both artists and in like industrious people, you know, we are right. little factories. Our concept artists have always been little factories, you know, and that separation is getting deeper with AI. And I think, what it's going to create is actually a reevaluation of true art, you know, painted art, like sketched art on paper, something physical, and um, a reorganization of what we call industrial work, you know, our industry. You know. To me, that's yeah. the, the echoes that are going to, the ripples. How do you think it's going to affect, like, social media? Well, it's already been affected. I mean, it already media. does, right? But, like, yeah, what, yeah, do you yeah. what do you think... Um, because so there, there's like multiple multiple layers of of it all, right? I mean, so deep, it, we, so deep. We we spoke about photo bashing and all this kind of stuff. like. Remember when photo bashing became a thing? Like, if yeah. you were photo bashing at the in the beginning, you were just getting hate left and oh, right. Oh, the, the witch like hunting, you fucking cheater. <laughs> this the and witch that. hunting. Yeah. So, so so it's funny because you know I I mean you and I you know we come from speed painting and, and I'm like. People were asking me, don't you think it's horrible that people use photos or that? And I was like, it's not that, that people use photo that bothers me. It's the fact that it means that painting is not going to be as uh, uh, looked forward to. You see what I mean? To me, it was more like yeah. the death of painting, which I've always loved. And, and that, that hurt me. You know, I was like, that's sad. You know, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll do photo bashing. You know, that's what, and I've always sucked at it really bad. So when 3D arrived, I was like, screw photo bashing. I'm going straight into 3D, you know, <laughs> because I sucked so bad at photo bashing. But, but to me, it was more like the death. But yeah, every time there's like a massive switch, there are witch hunts. There's self-proclaimed messiah that come with them. People that say, yeah. follow me. This is the right way. This is the honorable way. And I'm like, okay, great. You go on a freaking step in order to make you shine, you know, to be a, a warrior in a shiny armor. But it's irrelevant with AI. I would say that most of it is irrelevant. You know? um, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's also a different world too. Right. Cause like when, when 3d was encroaching in into like illustration and concept art and prior to that photo bashing and prior to that digital art, um, I don't think there was that many avenues to like monetize. Let's put it, let's put it this way, like monetize uh the work right because yeah. i mean i don't know if you if, if if your parents were telling you that when you were growing up but mine mine did saying like don't be an artist you're gonna starve on the street of course of course i mean <laughs> i had to hide money. to i had to hide to draw when i was a kid yeah my dad was um, furious when he would see me draw you know so <laughs> yeah i know exactly what you're talking about yeah uh, that's funny that's funny and it's like the only avenue that was actually pretty lucrative so a lot of a lot of i mean our careers were great like all things considered are, and are still are um you I know feel extremely you, lucky extremely lucky yes right you when you end up working in like hollywood or for big big video games companies and this is this is talking about you're putting all like blood blood sweat and tears for like many years and losing like shaving shaving years from your life basically yeah. to get there you yeah. can get in a position where you're like doing really well you know like I all things doubt. considered and but i think i think I, I i agree with your sentiment that there's a lot of 
this kind of industrialized kind of approach that was only available back then for the longest time. What are you like? You would either go into like a video games industry or film. Like if you're if early on you're in film, you're like you're doing really well. But you would go to film or like comic book. Yeah, comic you book know. was kind of the birth of it all. And and so funny, you know, I love documentaries. And YouTube, that's a great thing about YouTube, that YouTube has started releasing so many documentaries about comic books. And yeah. everything that we're going through in many ways, they've been through already. You know, the greed, the industrialization, the mechanization of a lot of things, you know, and 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 there's a lot to learn from the comic book industry, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I have I've not watched many comic book in uh, documentaries. So what watch do you think the, the parallels? One about the, watch the one about the Walking Dead. That's amazing. The Walking Dead. Okay, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, the I'll guy who created try. the Walking Dead and the artist that that drew it, and then the other artist because there was infighting and there was like, of course, money you know came in the mix and uh, right. It's, yeah, it's very good. What, very what do you think are the the biggest parallels then? Like, if you, would, the parallels if you would like overall, is that Artists are, in general, are very prone to be abused <laughs> <laughs> and to be used, you know. Uh, uh, and I think there is a, a growing up that needs to happen. But, but the thing is that there's a psychological connection with that. Like we grow up as artists because we want to prove people what we do is nice. You know, that's the first yeah. s- sensation we're trying, emotion that we're trying to convey, you know. And then what comes with that is the desire to be always good towards someone that's kind of parenting us, you know. And, and I think the future for artists, and I've been saying that for years, but I haven't even been able to do it for myself as, as well as I would like, is to grow up and to take in hand who you are as an artist and, like, uh, and, be, and be your own manager and become, uh, uh, become the manager, basically. You know? uh, and I think uh, with the tools that are coming today, there's more and more freedom to that. You know, there's uh, young guys you know, that are doing Blender short films, uh, and it's still very hard to monetize because of the big corporations that are that are holding everything, you know. But uh, yeah. but I think there's still room for growing for a lot of us as artists, you know, in that direction. So I said that's the biggest parallel with comic book is is as artists uh, creating amazing things is to grow up and not be used, basically. I would say that's yeah, it. I mean, there's there's the big industry of like artists that have Patreon. Uh, accounts yeah, and yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Kickstarter, monetizing yeah. through YouTube and Instagram, yeah. or using social media to build your kind of uh, fan base, and then you know offering prints and yeah, merchandise. Yeah, I mean, I, completely. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Ashley Wood. You know, I mean, I've been yeah. since when I was a kid. And, I mean, reading. I mean, I don't know how old he is now, but. Uh, either he started young He's an or OG. just yeah, uh, but uh, but I've always been a huge fan of his, and not necessarily just for his artwork, which is mind-boggling, you know. But this is for his business sense, you know. Mm. And there's a few artists like that that I really admire for that, and that I wish I could learn from, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Another one is James Jean. James Jean. That guy is. I mean, yeah, even that guy is fucking... more. I mean, maybe yeah, yeah. not more, but equally of a giant that has come through his own creation you know yeah, yeah yeah and then from the younger generation like i i've i've uh i've, I've mentioned this so many times but it's a proud moment for me obviously to see to see someone like starting and then growing to be huge on on social media like ross ross tran for uh, sure his for sure. ross draws yeah. channel yeah. yeah you know when I, when I had a podcast with him he was like barely like ten thousand subscribers on yeah on YouTube, and he was just start, like he was just releasing those, you know, funny like, you know, snappy, cool kind of quick I tutorial remember, videos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now he's like millions of millions of people following him, follow him and, and and his work. Yeah, um, and, and I, I noticed that as well. Is that there is more and more interest in art, you know? And yeah, I think that's something. I think that's a very positive development. You know, there are dark things that come with that. You know. I mean, artists tend to be very uh, uh, cliquish, you know, uh, and, and you have like witch hunts and so like, we love that apparently, you know, for some reason. <laughs> but uh, but uh, the positive aspect to it is that when you paint and you draw, you know, you're not, you know, killing someone else or, or you're 
actually thinking about things, you know, about light, about uh, what subject you're mm -hmm. painting, about uh, things like that. So I feel that's a, the democratization of art, I feel, is like a very positive development, you know. Yeah, where do you think this is going to I mean, obviously, there's there's the the production avenue, like the industrial industrialization part that you mentioned that it's basically an automation of everything that that costs that's exactly money, right. right? That's exactly um, right. That's I think that cost perfectly summed it, summed it up. Yeah, yeah, I think my my like, this is not a prediction. This is just the reality is going to be that the only cost of entry to make creative work is going to be the cost of computing really yeah. really just the cost of yeah. computing right sure yeah um and then well, I think, yeah go ahead yeah i'm just curious like what what's your thoughts on like how how do you how do you think this is gonna what the landscape let's 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 put on the fucking wizard's hats we're like in harry po harry potter movie or whatever like whatever we're just predicting the future right <laughs> What, yeah. what's going to happen and let's give it like a realistic timeline of five years <laughs> so, so, 10 years so, from now it's like impossible to predict right so, so what i kind of show you is that no one can tell right anyone <laughs> okay. who says otherwise <laughs> come on right let's now, try harder uh, let's just be uh, fucking uh, wizards let, let, for let a me, second let me, let me finish let me finish because <laughs> no, no, that's something i think about every day but let me finish because i'm not going to let you leave you there but the thing is that I think about it a lot, you know, especially when I see my nine-year-old daughter who wants to paint. Yeah. And she's like, I want to write stories. I want to paint. I want to do a comic book. I'm like, oh, crap. You know? <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, well, there's two ways I can do this. I can go either like my parents, my dad, you know, especially, who was like, don't draw. Don't do it. You know, uh, if I see you draw, uh, you'll be punished or whatever. You know, I can either be like this, you know, <laughs> which I won't, obviously, you know. But I thought about it. I was like, should I just make sure that she... She, but but the thing is that that she goes into a specific industry or becomes a lawyer or whatever. But even lawyers are not protected from. It. That's the thing. No, yeah. There's not one industry nowadays that may not be touched by AI. None, zero. So the thing that I thought about is like, where is the value? The value is in the personality. You know, is like your personality. If you're a douchebag or if you're someone that people like to work with, you know, and I think that's a massive value. You know your intelligence, like your culture, like how much you know about everything, about you know, how much you, how well read you are or how cultured you are. And, and also the basic skills as an artist, I think. And that's why I've been painting so much lately is because I realized that the most valuable skill that's gonna come in the future as artist is gonna be all the basic skills that we've kind of tried to get away from when we're doing industrial things uh, because of that right. separation of industry. And so I think that all the basics is where the safety is at, you know, like reading art books, understanding about art, learning about art, you know, uh, painting, drawing, sketching from life. I think these, all these things are going to become, if you want to become an artist and I think, and also a business, you know, I think a business is a big one that most artists forget about, you know, and so the only thing I can predict is that you're going to have all these people like those restaurants, those uh, uh, all those artists that I follow online or those guys that do documentary for comic books on YouTube or whatever, I think these are going to become, uh, let's say, uh, brand names, you know, big brand mm -hmm. names that are going to have massive value because there's going to be a massive following. When you have 1 million person, people following you, I mean, this is money, you know, and there's going to be battles about this. There's going to be choices and we're going to be people on YouTube are going to be abused by YouTube, of course, you know, uh, but there's still going to be ways to monetize this. And some people go away from YouTube. Some people go on different platforms too nowadays, you know, like you said. Yeah. I mean, the, the reality of social media is pretty obvious. Like if you're, if it's free, then you're at a product, right? So you have to kind of accept that whatever Correct. you do. Correct. Yeah. What do you think and is going to happen part, copyrights yeah. though? Like that's, that's a big one, right? Copyright. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that copyright laws, you know, are in a way that after a hundred years, you know, you, whatever I've created, you know, in my life, well, most of it is owned by either the mouse or other, other studios, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, the South for Park the stuff, mouse. <laughs> exactly. For, for, but the for the rest, version. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But for the rest of it, I mean, the stuff I own nowadays, I've created on my own in a hundred years, I'd be everybody's, you know, so ultimately, yeah. 
we're all going to end up in that big melting pot of data that art is a part of. Images, you know, our likeness, it's all data. It's all going to be monetized. It's all going to be sold and resold and revalued. And so, yeah, we're... Yeah, but that's... It's, but it's that's a little like, dystopian, you know, but... Yeah. But that's like, that's already exists, right? Like the everything becomes public domain after 100 years, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. technically speaking. But like in the in the more immediate term, if the cost of creation or cost of creativity, let's say, go, goes down to zero or co cost cost of production yeah. of, of products go down to zero. Um, I mean, that's going to have a massive implications to things like TV or film or video games, because like, why would you pay no $70 for a video game if you can just prompt one with your own That's ideas correct. and it's going to be as amazing as the one that created by like Lariant or Blizzard or you know Naughty Dog or you know whatever whatever and, and whatever, customized whatever. for you I think that's a big thing right. it's going to be customized just for your needs and your psychological profile uh, all that stuff you know yeah I, I think it's I think it's terrifying <laughs> that's what I would say yeah I think it's scary. I just, I'm just curious like what, what it's gonna what it's gonna mean to everything because it's like we're looking in like a very enclosed co like cosmos right of of, of art it's microcosm. because like the like microcosm, microcosm that's the word i was for looking sure. for yeah, yeah, yeah. um i mean once 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 the things we're talking about are possible i i mean i think everything else in the world will be in the sim in the, sim the similar similar vein like lawyers doctors all the you know all the white color especially, work. especially anything expensive you know all the medical field is is going to be hit really seriously because it's so expensive you know yeah uh, but but I, I mean the thing is to look back at the past you know if you look at yeah. the the auto industry you know mm -hmm. it started just with like maybe uh, the wife I, mean, I remember like the wife of the bmw guy you know who was doing stuff like machines for to 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 get grain and stuff like that she wanted to be able to go see her sister or whatever you know and they built the car and then she took the car just to go see her sister when it was supposed to be like, just like a, just a tool, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then, and then at some point you have so many factory workers with, with Ford, you know, and, and then they, they, then they replaced at some point, they replaced all these people with machines, you know, and you had people rebelling, taking the forks and be like, they were called the Luddites, you know, and they were like, no, don't, don't take our jobs, whatever. Well, I mean, history has not proven itself very, well to for those people you know right because n now no one builds cars by hand you know uh or very few little parts you know so and what it does is that you have to the world has to readjust to a different part of where the needs are and i think the needs are once again that's why i think focus on your core abilities you know whether it's humane or like uh, 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 artistic even you know uh, i think it's still going to be extremely valuable because whatever needs are going to come up, are going to need those kind of things, you know. Right. Hopefully. Until we get fooled by <laughs> yeah. real time, realistic humans created by AI that are more convincing than actual humans. I think that yeah. when that's happened. That's very dystopian. But I, but I, I think, I think until then, yes, like a human well, well, personalities okay. and communities will matter a lot, right? Well, if you want to go that far, if they really, yeah. that's where you want to go. You know, I wonder then, how far that is. Is it like 10 years yeah. from now? I mean, I or, highly, or sooner. I, I highly recommend a book. Uh, it's called Homo Deus. It's by Yuval Ahari. Okay. Okay. A, a lot of these answers are, are answered in that book, you know, and it's called Homo Deus because at some point, you know, machine humans merging, it's going to happen sooner than we think, you know, and at that point, mm -hmm. at that point, possibilities are going to be very different from the limitations that we have currently. Whether it's physical, right. you know, like breathing, flying, whatever, you know, uh, but then also thinking, like the, the the needs that we have today, you know, about feeding our family and making sure that we have enough money in the bank, are, are going to be relevant fifty years from now, you know. And I cannot right. predict what they're going to be, but it's going to be a lot about that merging, you know, of AI and ourselves. We're just either AI is going to take off from this planet and <laughs> leave us alone. Or it's gonna merge with us, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're we're kind of already are with this, right? With the phone. Completely. Completely. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. The the funniest part is just like trying to 
pinpoint and predict anything. Like it, it felt it was it felt impossible doing that ten years, like fifteen years ago, thinking where the industry is gonna go. And now it's just like completely just you're just might as well just throw darts in in the air and see where it lands, you know? Yeah, and we had the we had the mercy of powers, no like uh, like big corporations again that are developing AI, but also governments that are completely behind on that subject, you know, and 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 we had the mercy of of this storm that's happening in slow motion, you know, and it's very hard to predict anything, you know. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Uh, I mean, you've mentioned like honing in on personal skills. I agree. Like, uh, I think I think there's going to be a niche industry um, that's related to like traditional art. I think that much bigger industry. And I mean, again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even even predicting. I'm just thinking loud. I'm not not sure how much of it's going to be true. I see an I see an opportunity where your sort of like personal brands will matter. Building personal brands, or bu building your own IPs. Fully uh, so, but I, I, the, the word IP doesn't matter if if you don't have people who are actually recognizing it as an IP, right? Like you can yes, just say something correct. is an IP until you have an audience that actually follows well, follows you for it, right? Well, yeah. And first, you have to have a product out, you know, and and then <laughs> you have and then you have to have people look at the product, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's where there's. I mean, it's very hard to break through, you know. And and it always comes down to similar things as before, you know, whether it's during sergeant times or, or or or. I mean, it's like there's a hype that comes with it, you know, like like how hyped you can you be hyped, you know how. <clears throat> it's and it's also timing, like you said earlier on, like an artist yeah. are having at the right time doing the right product. You know, it's 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 not easy. It's and it's I think it's very hard to be uh, to do that. You know, a few people have done it, and even yeah. then, they did not necessarily succeed. Yeah, so it's, it's like the melting pot of timing, luck, and by luck I mean having enough enough of skills and enough of like uh clear mind to notice opportunities and take and take a leap to to grab them yeah and to have um, the personality to and the strength yeah. to support to support this because yeah i mean it's not easy once you have something big to keep it on your shoulders you know that's why i mean it's a big responsibility to have an ip after too you know and yeah. to deliver it and that's why I admire people like like singers that are very successful and they are able to to really uh, keep going for years and years and years without becoming either stretched faces or like uh, you know uh, <laughs> uh, you, you see what I mean <laughs> like people that that because some artists uh, they just crumble under under the insecurities. All artists are insecure, all of them. You know? Yeah, it's how you manage those insecurities. You know, I admire artists that are able to manage both. You know the the talent, the work, and the insecurities, and the business. I mean, it's hard. It's very hard. Yeah, you just just have to not read comments. <laughs> Completely. But um, at the same time, those comments are, are what sells on social media, you know? True. So the negative stuff is going to always go on the to the surface, you know? That's true. That's true. Yeah. Like, I've, it's something I've heard recently that, like, on YouTube, generally speaking, the thumbnails that are have negative connotation like you're 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 giving a negative look to something that's positive even though the positive video is positive yep. makes makes for more click through there's no doubt about that sensationalizing, sensationalizing stuff is like always uh, uh which we is are highly facade. manipulated <laughs> we are highly manipulated and that's why once again i think uh and i, I i've learned that the hard way you know is that and that's why I think it's very important to develop yourself as an artist. That's why I keep saying, like, and not just the art. I'm talking about psychologically. Like, how can yeah. you become more balanced? How can you, uh, how can you get smarter? Not be and uh, be business savvy. Be. I think it's all these elements slowly that you need to to intake, you know. And but the most important thing is your psychological profile. It's like, where do you come from? How were you raised? You know, how much suffering did you have to endure in order to become an artist? You know, and do you have the strength to support that once you're successful? Yeah. 
I want to hone in on that in a second, um, sure. but I want to come back to one one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we we've kind of briefly discussed about the rift about about AI in the industry, where things are going, and like the reality of what uh, what companies that hire artists do. Obviously, their number one priority will be to deliver a product and cut corners where they can. And if they can cut corners by getting automated illustrations that are done like for a fraction of the cost, there's no reason why they wouldn't do it, right? Um, I was, Correct. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm focused on directing more more recently. Pretty much last two yeah. years, I've been, yeah, with the exception of the Joker two, which is the last film project that I've done. I've, I've basically kind of thrown myself into directing and and hoping yeah, it's going to stick. Very right? good move. I think it's a very very good move. Um, I think I, it's a move I'm making too. So I think it's a very very important move. Yeah. But what do you what do you think about the industry sentiment and 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 it's like I understand so. I'll just to set the stage. I completely understand the angle, and I, I and I even support it to to a, a very high degree. That there's something fucked up going on in terms of like how those how those uh, AI algorithms are, have been created, like basically farming data from everywhere without consent. There's like leaked sure. DMs coming from Midjourney and Stable. Diff- like there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Yeah. Um, but there's also just a set reality of things and making things stri- making things right is almost always an uh, a, a kind of a lost cause in a way especially for something that is just so massively disruptive yeah. um so i wonder like w- w- what do you think about this whole rift because because there are people like like yourself even even when i talked to when i spoke to steven and a bunch of others, especially those who are like really affected by AI, none of them have like really negative view. M- maybe I'm mischaracterizing their opinions, yeah. but but to me it was just like there's an ethical kind of recoil reaction to to the technology, which is completely sure. understandable. Yeah. Um, but there's also like a setting in reality and sort of like a thinking process okay like how much can realistically be done and and we obviously have to push to get things done but but does it really matter and like i i wonder what's your stance on not really what do you think should be done from like technology point of view because i think to me at least that cat is out of the box basically yeah but from a perspective of like this kind of industry rift, which we both like, as you mentioned, went through yeah, numerous yeah. times on just much smaller scale, for sure. So, so, so I think first of all, there's one thing is that all the people that you're mentioning, whether I mean it's myself, Steven, particularly Steven, no, people like this, it's people. I mean, we've been through the freaking ringer many times. Like I'm talking like. In our industry, we've been brutalized left and right. You know, especially if you work in the movie <laughs> industry for ten years, you no, know, you will be brutalized. Dude, yeah. I love your, I, I love your fucking choices of word, <laughs> fucking chef's kiss, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you know. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, talking about Stephen. I mean, I, that guy is a warrior. You know, he's been through one billion battles of illustrations. Uh, if such thing happens, you know. So yeah. So it, it's the kind of guy. And I feel I feel somewhat similar about myself that I feel like if you put uh, if you put St- uh, Stephen uh, like in a if you put Steve like on the street tomorrow, I can assure you that by the end of the week he'll find a way to make money. Yeah, you know, he'll find a way to we because of all the 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 things we've been through, we've been trained to not say yes to any budget that's given to us. You know, we've been. We we uh, we've been trained to refuse budgets that are ridiculous, you know. Uh, yeah. We've been trained to fight for for ourselves, you know. And maybe when you're in the studio, like full time, it's not the same. You're much more protected, which is what they want, by the way. But but they, there's something about being a, a free agent for a while that teaches you a lot of brutal lessons. That's what I mean by that, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think the first reaction, I mean, at least for myself and for Steven, I said earlier on, my reaction was like, okay. Well, 
concept art is potentially game over. That's why mm -hmm. I, I still think that way. I still think that there's a concept art as we knew it is gone. That's my point of view. For sure. There, there's something else that's coming, you know, and right now it's a form of AI. Yes, there are like a legal horror going on with our, our work. I mean, a lot of people <laughs> complain about it, but mo I mean, a big part of the work that's been ingested by those AI is a lot of our work, you know, my yeah. work, your work, I can assure you is in there. I know it's in there. Yeah. And, and, but at the same time, like, okay, well, there's a shift of cards. Does it bother, does it bother you that it's in there? So, so the thing is that I've never had a lot of ego, you know, I, I'm, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe at least in my eyes, maybe my work says differently. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just saying that shows that maybe I have a lot of ego, you know, but, She's uh, just like... but, uh, <laughs> exactly. but, but I always felt like, you know, I'm 50, how much more do I have left to live? Truthfully, right. you know, uh, I don't know if it's much, you know, uh, and that's why I, I go back to, to, to another, but. That's why I feel like, okay, well, if my personality, my artwork has been stolen, but is part of a big zeitgeist and can be there for the rest of the humanities, why not? If that's where I end up, you know, why not, you know? <laughs> but, but the thing, that, and that's why I'm coming back more and more to, to, to physical art, is because what's more important than, than this for me, you know, all, all the years I worked on in, in the industry, on studio, whatever, is the legacy I leave to my kids. You know, like, is mm -hmm. my daughter going to have a painting on the wall that I did, you know, when she has, uh, when she's 80, you know, I, I would hope so more than she's going to watch a freaking movie that has topped in over a month and then collapsed and no one talked about it ever again, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's the thing is like, it has awakened in me more than anger or hate. I, I don't think I feel any of it. What it has awakened in me is like a realignment of what truly matters in life and what truly matters in life ever since i've been a kid is create creating as long as i can create whether it's freaking painting using uh, uh, pasta seashell pasta or whatever or it is painting or it is doing concept art for movies i think i'll be happy you know mm -hmm. and it's easy for me to say that because I've worked all these years and people may think, oh, well, but he's done all this. So now he said he has money or whatever. Uh, nothing is ever said. I'm a concept artist. I'm not a freaking uh, banker. <laughs> okay. It's not like I have a billion saved in my bank account. You know, uh, so people's reality. I mean, I think reality is very twisted for a lot of people too. You know, like I'm an artist. I'm not a billionaire, you know, and yeah. what, and at, at that point of my life, seeing AI coming, seeing all this coming, I don't feel necessarily fear. Although I made a switch in my, in my career. <laughs> so I had yeah. some fear, but, but it's more of an awakening. What truly matters to me? Sorry for the long winded answer, you know, but no, 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 keep, keep going, yeah. keep going. I, I love to listen. Yeah. It's, it's more, it's more, it's more what's in your head really. Yeah. And, I, than... and as I'm talking, I, I feel like I'm in therapy too. I'm, I'm bouncing this <laughs> of you because I'm like, how is he going to react to the crazy things I'm saying, you know? And, and how can we go from there? But I feel that my family is what centers me, you know, and, mm -hmm. and when I see my kids that want to create, I'm like, what can, what are they going to need for the future? And it's a very hard question to answer. Yeah. 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 You know, with kids, it's, it's obviously our responsibility. If you have kids, it's your responsibility to put them in the best position that they can be to be mo the most equipped to have a wonderful life, right? But the choices they're going to make is the choices they're going to make. I, feel, I, I I truly believe that they just need to make choices, even if they're bad choices. Yeah. Because lessons learned early, especially like failing really hard early on, will prepare them for a better life, uh, yeah. you know, later down the road. I, that's exactly um, right. That's exactly right. Be a good person I, is a good start, you know? <laughs> I totally agree with you on like, I mean, I, th I think everyone has like this kind of either everyone will have or already had this kind of mal culpa with with uh, with progression of technology, I think, at least. But I, the, the question I constantly keep asking myself is like, if there is a certain skill that we 
have. That's a technical skill, not our mental skill that can be so easily replaced, then correct. is it that valuable in the first place? You know, that's correct. That's entirely correct. I think um, you're, you're completely hitting the nail on the head here. It's your mental abilities and skills are going to be much more valuable than your technical skills. I agree. Yeah. You know, and you, when you think about AI, you know, let's say you can write a prompt and it creates a movie, you know, let's say it happens. You know? Being a good writer, although being a good writer could be replaced by AI too, potentially. <laughs> but uh, but, uh, but uh, being a good writer, or have good ideas, or like being cultured is truly is going to make you a master at these arts. Let's say if we remove the emotional stuff, okay? Let's mm -hmm. say AI becomes the way of creating in the future, which it very, may, very well may be, then being mentally powerful is going to be the best weapon you, you can have. Uh, extremely creative, extremely cultured, extremely, I mean, being able to convey complex ideas, you know, humane ideas and things like this. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, how do you become stronger? How do you build that mental muscles? Like so what did I, you, I, what did you I, do I, to build those mental uh, muscles? So, so, well, well, I've been therapy for 10 years. That's one, <laughs> <laughs> that's one. Cause I was really freaking mess, right. you know, uh, but, uh, the big thing, and I think that's where people have it completely wrong about AI. I think where AI can shine, like truly shine, is education. To me, that's the big thing. To me, AI, because education is a mess. You know, it's the, the, the system that people use for education nowadays is rooted in like Charlemagne's time, you know, which is a long time ago. Okay, things yeah. have changed a lot. There's some exceptions like... I've, I've heard Finland has, for example, like an amazing kind of completely yeah. ra radical to to a current um, educational system, and they and they have like some amazing results coming out of it. So I, I saw that, yeah, and yeah. it's like one over the whole planet. You know, right. the other way you can have great education nowadays is if you have tons of money. You know, you mm -hmm. have all those dictators; they don't send their kids to their homeschool, you know, they send kids to Paris and London. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's nowadays, it's either through money, you get that education or you get, uh, or like you say, like I heard about that in Finland, you know, or, mm -hmm. or th through different schools in America, it's a mess too, you know, where if you have money, then you have good schools. If you don't, it's very hard to yeah, get fucked. good education. But I think AI is going to be where the power lies in, into AI is education. I, I did a test for fun, you know, is, I took a stable diffusion, you know, I did, I did a painting, I did a painting, like a real painting. Mm -hmm. I took it into st stable diffusion and I typed, uh, the landscape I did, you know, and I say painted by Sargent. And what it came back to me was mind boggling. I could tell the, with the image that was sent back to me that I could basically backward engineer how Sergeant could have maybe done my painting if he had been me, basically. Right. You know, imagine the power that it is. Imagine that you 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 need to go to therapy, for example, and you you call Freud and like, hey, please, Freud, can you or Jung, you know, can <laughs> yeah. you please uh, give me for free therapy for the next five years? You don't think people are gonna get better? People become better. I think that's where the big unused part of AI is going to be: is education and teaching and learning things. I think there's a massive, interesting thing that's there. The rest, I agree, it's destructive for now. Yeah, yeah there's there's an interesting, I, mean, I don't know how much you played with ChatGPT, but there's an, I, I feel like ChatGPT was amazing when it was, like the ChatGPT4 specifically was amazing when it was released. And now it's kind of like stripped down the version for whatever reason, like feels worse than it's ever been. I don't know why, like it's just degrading. Um, but even 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 though, to like take that away uh, and take away the fact that it hallucinates and it comes up with like shit that doesn't exist and is wrong on a lot of things. Like don't ask it history questions. It will come up with some shit that is probably not true because it, the, all the information is gathered from internet, let's say. And that's all the good information, like actual historical data and all the fucking flat air for uh, flat earthers you know, equally, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Um, 
so there's a there's a, a, a big kind of error margin that happens but i'm pretty sure Fully. that over time that's going to get course corrected uh whether for good or, or bad you oh, know bad. specifically yeah, exactly. for things like history that that's 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 uh very debatable. much so however yeah. um let's say you want to write a like you want to you you're working in blender and you want to do some some cool stuff or or come up with like functionality or you you have two different softwares like man i wish there was an app that could connect those two and make it so that i can do this thing right and yeah. with with something like chat gpt you you can do it if you can train your like even just by going through the motions actually you're training your brain to think critically and connect you're dots programming right your brain right yeah and so <laughs> And then the, the cool part is like you, you can ask it to give you step by step and it's going to be like a junior level, intern level, kind of entry level thing. Um, more recently, it actually uh, gives you like links to videos that it finds on YouTube as well. So it's kind of like yeah. a like a like a baby version of search engine. Yeah. But yeah, it kind of gives you th this is something that I think universities are great at. And a lot of like, w there's this question that people ask, like, should I go to university to be an artist? Like, should I go to art school to be an artist? Or can I learn uh, from internet by myself? Some people will learn from internet by, by themselves. And actually vast majority of those people will not even ask this question because they were already learning, right? If you're asking That's this correct. question that probably needs, you need structure. Yep. So you need to go to art school, but obviously exactly right. who's paying fucking 200 K in us to get an art degree it's, it's absolutely stupid right now i would say yeah. um but with something like chat gpt you kind of you, you can train your brain to kind of to have that structure to kind of force yourself to have that structure and have that critical thinking because you can ask start from like very simple question you know i want to do x what should i do and it gives you answers and if you think critically okay well let's 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 take the first one can you kind of elaborate and give me more ideas you know and you kind of go down the rabbit hole of things. Yeah. Um, so I agree on yeah. the education part. It's absolutely, you're spot on on that for sure. And I think that would be a positive way of using it, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. But we're humans and humans, <laughs> the first thing about making money <laughs> <laughs> and stealing each yeah. other. You know? Yeah, I want to talk about the mental strength next because I mean, I, I, I said I want to hone on this. Like you, I mean, you've mentioned therapies and whatnot, but do you have like, do you have like your own kind of mantra that you go through life when it comes to like, how do I build that muscle? Cause it's a muscle, you know, like being resilient to things doesn't just happen because you think about being resilient to things, right? Like something either needs yeah. to happen or you have to kind of force yourself to do things. I really think, I mean, my only answer is therapy. I mean, because I, I think as a, as a human, you know, we all are grown up little kids, you know, if when you grew up, you didn't have the structure necessary in order to have structure as, as an adult, I think it's mm -hmm. almost close to impossible to catch it back. That's my, my take. The only way to catch it back is to be quote unquote parented again, you know, uh, right. and I know that when I grew up, you know, my family was a mess, you know, and I'm still at 50 trying to fight those defects that came from my childhood, you know. And the only way I can get help is by seeing a professional, you know, which in few years may become an AI professional, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's very plausible, you know, uh, I'm talking about education and, but, uh, but I think, uh, I, I wish I had, you know, when I see all these YouTube videos of guys that are like super big, super tough, you know, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> I do, I take protein and then I'm such a strong dude, whatever. No, it's all, people need to realize that it's all a freaking smoke and mirror those guys are not tough they're not they may be very successful but i can assure you that even if they show a face of being very successful like on super big podcasts you know that we see whatever i can assure you that when they go home and they have a problem with their kids crying or whatever they're like oh fuck what, 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 sorry but what, yeah, yeah. What, what am i gonna do uh, uh she i mean parents are parents you know you face similar issues when you're a teenager you face horrible issues stress you know and the way you look and all these things and I think that until you've had like someone helping you structure your brain, I don't think there's miracle solution to structure your brain. At least, mm. no. no. Okay, Aside yeah, from that makes sense. Educating yourself, educating yourself. You know, 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's it's an interesting point you're making here. Like, I, I've, I've there's all there's always a caveat. It's like you can find shitty therapists, and then, like if you take if you stay with them too long, um, you're fucked. You're even you're even worse. <laughs> you're even worse than you were starting. Yeah. You know, and and that's the other yeah. thing. And 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 to be able to have a therapist, you need you need to have insurance, health insurance. You know, just that alone. Yeah. You know, uh, if you don't, well, uh, too bad. You know, especially in America. You know. Uh, and like you say, finding the right person is extremely difficult because you have to trust that person with be basically doing brain surgery, you know? Uh, yeah. So do you find doing difficult things ir irons your like mental strength? So, yes, as you were saying that, I was thinking, oh, I, for I forgot something. So it's perfect. It's okay. true. Is And that's why I started being an artist when I was a kid. You know, I had trouble in my family, you know, parents divorcing, all that stuff. My escape and my my mantra, you're talking about mantra, that was it. That was drawing, that was painting. It, we all know, you know, when we're doing art, the reason why we keep going back to it is because it puts you puts us in a in a zone, puts us in a flow yeah. mode, you know. And I think that is highly therapeutic. And and, and whether you're an artist or not, I mean, you can start painting at any age, whether you've done art in your life or not, and it will be therapeutic uh, because I think it activates multiple parts of your brain and takes you out of depression, takes you out of PTSD or you name it. So, yes, I, I mean, that's it. So that's the, yeah. that's the good side of the cross to bear that we have is that when we do art, we heal ourselves, I think. I wonder. I, I agree. There's a, there's a very therapeutic element of um, being in that flow state where you're just you're not even thinking about time, the world, or anything else. You're kind of just doing, and you're just focused, like completely focused of doing. That doesn't need to be necessarily art. It could be anything else, right? Um, whether it's creative or not, but like the flow state is a real thing and exists. Um, there's also I'm I'm pretty sure there are times where it just becomes an escape escapism as well. I fully <laughs> agree. I am, I am hundred percent with you on that. Like yeah. I had that phase. You know, I told you I didn't do any art for one year. You know, yeah. a year ago I had that phase where I was like, I don't want to do art anymore because it's kind of a, a d dark hole where I disappear and then three hours mm -hmm. have passed. You know, so yeah. and I want to do physical things. I want to go out. I want to go hike and things like that. And I think balancing those two is what makes you, gives you strength. I think, you know, being able yeah. to run on a regular basis or do some kind of physical exercise and still do art as well, you know, and be around loved ones. You know, I think that's what gives you strength. You know? But do I, you... like anything like, like mental training or like, like protein shakes or whatever. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, if you work, I... if you're working out like a lot, oh, and I understand protein, protein shakes. You, I mean, you don't really. It's, an, it's another form it's of just, escape too, you know. Just depends on your goals, I guess. Yeah. That's. I exactly mean, look. Right. I, yeah. I. By the way, there's. I, I think the the, the the part of it that it's like it's funny when you say this, and like I, I'm 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 envisioning pictures. It's like there's certain <laughs> cut cut of people that are like. I think what you do is inspiring, and like for someone like because, if you. If you have, if you, if you can force yourself to work out every day or like, like regularly. And, and by the right? way, I'm saying that, but I admire some of those guys, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I'm getting at. Cause I know you do. <laughs> and it's like, there is a, there's a, a, an immense mental strength you have to have to, to like be consistent. Right. And this is the Completely. same with art and whatever, but there's just like a fuck ton of grifters too. They're just like. Hey, but but also just buy buy my product, right? <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly right. That's it's exactly just like right. for each their own, I guess you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like I said, I I mean I go to the gym and I I lift weights and I take protein in the morning, so I'm I'm part of the problem. You know? so. <laughs> You're part of the problem. <laughs> uh, uh, I wanted to follow up also. Um, but that's not what so, gives mental strength. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. No. Yeah, no. yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Like it's, it I, I, I think it depends. It, th th yeah, discipline. Uh, discipline is yeah. the right word. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely yeah. gives discipline. <laughs> but don't you think discipline is kind of kind of is a, a mental strength? Because like not everyone can like is discipline. Yeah, it's a right? muscle. Like you have to actually. It's a muscle. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a muscle that is taught to you as a kid. Uh, that's what I believe. I believe that discipline. I mean, you can learn at, at any age, you know. But I think it's harder 
when you're on old dog to learn that 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 skill. You know, I know. Do you think it's myself, a valuable skill? Discipline. I, I think it's an extremely valuable skill. It's a skill that I didn't value enough for many years. Mm -hmm. That was, I'd say that that was my biggest fault for many years. Yeah. And so if you're a lazy bum, like how do you get disciplined then? Well, there's different motive, and that's where psychological aspect comes in place again. It was like, what is driving you? Why do you want to be successful? I know that right. I wanted to be successful when I was young because. As an artist in France, you valued as a bum, you know, and the yeah. only artists that are valued in France or in Europe and maybe in general is artists that are on TV, you know, so mm -hmm. like I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be making movies <laughs> so I can be famous. I didn't I'm going to be an have... influencer. <laughs> exactly. I didn't have much more motivation. But, and so that's what gave me drive. And the psychological thing behind it was that I wanted to prove my dad that I was good. You know, that was right. the true that I discovered through therapy is that I wanted to impress my dad, you know, and, uh, and, but, but that's not enough to be happy. That's the issue. So wanting to impress someone is not enough to be happy. You have to find motivations that are going further than that inside yourself. You know, do you and think... I think discipline, that's where discipline helps is you cannot have discipline if you don't have a clear goal, I think basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's hard. Yeah. That, I agree on that. Yeah, you have to have a goal because otherwise you're disciplined towards nothing, right? Yeah. Like you have to, yeah. you, you have to have a goal that you want to go towards. It's going to be difficult enough for you to actually keep, have to be disciplined to actually achieve it. You know? Yeah. Um, but why reach wanted... that goal too? You know, that's the question. Right. Mm. Right. Um, do you think? Because we were talking about mental strength, I fucking love that topic. By the way. It's all, it's on my mind all the time, it, too, especially the older you get, yeah. it's, it's on okay. your mind all the time. Big time yeah. Yeah. Um, was there, do you think there was like any, do you think like really difficult life moments get you, like actually build that men, like the, that mental callus, you know, like the fucking, you know, when you're deadlifting a bar and you get, get those calluses on your, on your palms, you know? That look like you're fucking I think, holding a cactus. <laughs> I, I think that I think there's truth to it, but I think there's a price to pay too. So I think it's fifty mm -hmm. fifty. Yeah, it makes you stronger, and also makes you more sensitive. You know, uh, mm. you know when I was young, I mean, and you no, know, uh, I, I, I was like uh, girls, whatever, you know. And then at some point, I got dumped, you know. And I really, from that day. I really took much more care into people I was with in my relationships. But so the pain really made me a much better person altogether, you know, right. But at the same time, made me more fragile and more insecure. So, mm -hmm. so I think it comes with, it's a double-edged sword, you know, uh, I think any pain comes with strengthening and weakening. If you would have to put the most difficult thing, you've ever done mentally or otherwise do you think that built your mental strength or was like again yeah, like so a 50 yes 50? i mean the first thing that comes to mind is the, the the first short film i directed you know years ago it was 10 15 years ago uh that was the hardest thing i had ever done on all levels you know i basically mm -hmm. flattened my bank account i i i got into depression you know uh it took me a long while before I could release it with somewhat of a sentiment of pride, you know, which even once released, I barely had, you know, because right. uh, what was I thinking? You know, that my <laughs> first short film was going to be good. What the hell was I thinking? You know, um, and it, it did both. It strengthened me over a long period of time. There's mistakes that I don't do anymore, no doubt. But also right. it made me very insecure for a very long time. So... So mm. what I said is true. It's like it, it the, the strength, the strengthening doesn't necessarily become obvious right away. That's the difficult part. Yeah, because it's very difficult to put it in, in, in like once you go through something fucking difficult, um, like the only thing you the only immediate thoughts you, you, you mostly going to have is like, well, if you if you accomplish it, it's like, yes, I fucking did it. There is like a like a surge of dopamine, right? But sure. that that goes away quickly, you know. That's sure. just a, an, yes. an enzyme in your brain, and, and that's in the best case kind of... scenario. 
if you have that dopamine, it means that you did something right. you're proud of, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, when you do something like extremely difficult and you finish it, yeah. if you're proud, like, yeah, there's, let's say, let's say you're proud of it, but, but that goes yeah. away. But there's yeah. like in, in the media is like, like, why did I like, there's like an immediate cost, like whether you're, you know, exhausted or battered no or doubt. Fucking fragile or whatever. Right. And it's very difficult to put things into perspective because like there are things that you mo might have gone through that are becoming a life lessons that you will fully only agree. fully realize like five or 10 years ahead of time. That's you know? exactly, that's exactly what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. Then, uh, yeah, no, and the thing is that, uh, yeah, exactly. The pain is not necessarily right away a proven lesson, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a very difficult thing to grasp because like I've went through like a couple of moments like that of myself. Like doing the Linkin Park Lost video was so difficult. That was and then, <laughs> oh my god, that was like holy shit! What what have I done? You know, like yes. Myself and Emily, when we when we kind of took on that project, it was just it was just probably one of the most challenging projects I've, I've ever done. You know, I'm not there's always this yeah. like I wish I had more time. I wish I had like you know, there's always that. Exactly. But there's a like in hindsight, there's just so much I've learned through it too, even just mentally, uh, the That's mind, it. Mind, yeah. mindset mindset shift and thinking about things. And you know, it's funny you mentioned like when I asked you like what's the most because okay, I'll I'll tell you the reason why I asked this like. What's the most difficult you've ever thing you've ever done? I, I thought you were gonna say like sailing through Atlantic, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> and you go like straight to fucking directing. It's like my guy, like holy shit, you're so right. <laughs> well, if we wanna go and talk about things that are outside of work, the most difficult thing I've ever done is trying to raise my kids. Uh, yeah. That is <laughs> that it. is by far that's why you have like, all the gray hair right now. <laughs> the, correct. That's correct. Like, way more difficult than any artistic endeavor I've ever had in my whole life. You know? yeah. yeah. It's incredible, incredibly challenging. And I mean, I, it, well, it depends. Like if you're just like a deadbeat dad who doesn't give a fuck, then like well, nothing is really difficult, too. right? <laughs> that's exactly right. But and, and, yeah, and that's the thing I was trying to remember last time is that what you were telling me is like about the difficulty of creating like a big project and the thing is that I think in the perfect world, as artists, what you want is to have enough money. And I know some artists are at that level, by the way. I met yeah. a few of them that are at that level. Is that you create something, you pour your soul and heart into it, and then you take a break. You take a freaking break. You know, you go yeah. and spend five five months in a freaking in Tahiti. Okay? Some artists, I'm talking about like big level people, directors or whatever that have been through the ringer themselves, by the way, you know, yeah. they were able to, to go and break that threshold where they do have breathing. You see what I mean? The thing that in our, I know you, you know, I know that in your life, we don't have that luxury. You know, I finished my short film, my bank account was flat, you know, <laughs> Amy was pregnant. We were, I mean, we had to pay for medical bills and, and there was no way I would have a break after my short film. No way. I yeah. had zero time. I had zero time to enjoy it, and but ideally, in a creative world, that's what you would want. Like where you pour yourself into for two, three years in a project, and then you have a year to breathe. You know. Yeah, I well, that I, creates I, mental I, that creates mental strength. That would help. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think to add to that, the most interesting thing I also realized talking to some some people like that is that the projects that they embark like not even not even mentioning the shit that they went through like because it's it's mind-boggling like how much mental strength you have to have like talking about directing i mean you've been on a set of films many times like once you're on a on the film set where you see all those lights the whole crew and you tens of thousands of dollars just every fucking minute just goes to the to the burner yeah yeah like how much pressure and stress there is like guaranteed 99.99 percent of people who comment on youtube is like oh this movie was shit oh. would fucking crumble under the pressure in the first five minutes right well, they would have crumbled yeah. way before that yeah exactly way before that. um so there is like there's a, a massive amount of like mental and physical strength you have to have to even operate on that level 
And then when that's you correct. do, that's when your skills are valued. And then you can take like a fuck you. And you also have to be lucky, like lucky enough to do For correct sure. project oh. that eventually fucking gets you know recognized or win awards and whatnot because that's correct you know that's correct for for every super successful director there's uh hundreds of thousands of them who just failed miserably you yeah, know correct yeah um so it's it's definitely yeah you, it there's a big price to pay but then yeah you can take you can take a few months off and but then you're like fully well deserved you know correct yeah. i never look at those folks as like oh like there's such a good life it's like hmm I think they work their asses off, even if they got lucky. Like there's there there has to be skill. Like there's no there's absolutely no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I wonder exactly. how many big shot directors right, there are right now that have a balanced family life. You know, I think maybe uh, the there's a few. There's a few, but not many. <laughs> probably, probably, probably not many. Yeah. There's a few. Yeah, I know many. there's a few, but not many. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, directing is fucking horribly difficult. That's for yeah, sure. But it's fun too. It is I mean, fun. It's so much fun. It's so exhilarating, you know. Some of yeah, the, the some of the best moments in my life, aside from my family, you know. I mean, we're directing, you know, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, you know that working with like a crew, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, working with people, especially if, if the people you work with are are great people, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and that's like correct. the this kind of energy you get from getting the best out of them you know yeah is 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 really exhilarating i agree and then just yeah. seeing your kind of ideas come come to life by yeah. like a collective you know um effort that's correct yeah and, and there's other ways you can do that you know once again i mentioned uh, ashley wood or your own you know there's people that create on a uh, in different formats you know uh, yeah they are the master of their own and that's what i was saying at the beginning of this discussion is I think that's the ultimate goal for artists, whether you direct, whether you have your own channel on YouTube, uh, or whether you have your Patreon, or whether you, you have your company that makes pottery, I don't know, you know, whatever it is, you know, is, is to feel like you are the master of yourself and able to, to, uh, to succeed with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to leave this conversation without coming back to your journey through atlantic like if you want to if you don't want to talk about it then you don't have to but i need to ask no, no, we you can. Like, no, I, don't, I don't mind how no. was that so, like because so, I, I, like, I mean that, that, just one of those that's days, a whole podcast that's okay, a whole podcast i mean i don't know how much time you have but i, <laughs> I, mean, I can talk I swear, forever i swear it's a whole podcast of its own uh so i i grew up sailing you know as a kid you know, like i'm yeah. optimist you know those tiny tiny sailboats and then and then 420s and then basically like different levels. And then when I became a teenager, I was a rebel and became a windsurfer. And I, mm -hmm. I know that in Poland, windsurfing is massive, by the way. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's yeah, a we really see. good uh, uh, windsurfer right now, actually, that's, uh, that's in the top three uh, world champions windsurfing, you know? And that it's was my funny. Life. It's windsurfing. funny you say that because it clicks immediately because I, I grew up on the coast, right? And I would go go for like a walk. Like my mom would would walk uh, across yep. the like the boulevard, which is like a yep. seafront, and we yep. would just go for like an hour. To, like we would go for walks like three four times a week for an hour, right? Yeah, yeah. We would always see windsurfers, like always yep. every time, whether yep. it's the fucking winter, like w whatever the time of yep. the year, it would be always. It's, yep. it's funny you say that. Yeah, it totally clicks. Yeah. I think one of the top world champions is is his name is Racek uh, mm -hmm. or something like this. You know, really awesome guy. By the way. But anyway, so so that's that was my teenager years. I was I was a beach bum basically. I was day in and out. I was just on the water, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. trying to learn new tricks, whatever, you know. And then uh, and then when I started being ambitious about concept art, you know, I dropped all of that. I just became just in my brain, you know, and yeah. abandoning my body literally, you know, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and all through the years, no, it's come back, you know, uh, the sailing has made a comeback and I, and I, and I've been doing it more and more. I've been windsurfing more and more and it's difficult with the family, but I've been doing more and more of it. And my big fantasy was one day my dad crossed the Atlantic and I saw it as a psychological kind of like goal of mine to mm -hmm. cross the Atlantic as well. One day, you know, uh, this kind of battle between myself and my dad, you know, like full on Star Wars, you know, uh, and uh, and so I organized it. I decided to go with a with a group that does that every year, you know, and 
And, and, I, and I was curious. And I did it really talking about strengthening. That's why I did it. I really wanted to face myself in a place where I could be just mostly, not only, but mostly on my own or with a team, within a team, and face something that I knew was extremely difficult. Because it's it's hard. It's, it's hard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Just because it's very I cannot fathom, by yeah. the way. Like, that's that's <laughs> like just one day you just casually post it on your on your feed. It's like, oh, I just crossed <laughs> the Atlantic. It's like, bro, what? <laughs> well, and 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 it was really about that, like really finding my limits and knowing what I was mm -hmm. made of in many ways. And the, the the thing that was shocking to me is I didn't come from where I thought expected. I thought it was going to be for me. I remember growing up with my dad and my dad was, we were sailing to Corsica, we were sailing to different places. It's not a huge boat, it's like 10, 10 meter boat, a sailboat, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and it was hard. I remember like puking my stomach out for weeks at a time sometimes, you know? Especially as a kid, it was really hard. But, but I was always admiring of my dad who was able to just manage the boat, you know, being able to to I mean, he had all the negative personality traits, but he was a very driven person, you know, and I was mm -hmm. always admiring of that. And I was like, how did he do it? Even as I got older, I was like, I know it's hard. How did he do it? And I wanted to experience that. And so I thought, okay, well, what's going to be hard is like taking turns, you know, because there's only, there was only uh, four of us, you know, and we were taking turns at night, two by two, you know, and making sure that we keep the other alive, you know, because you have like freaking ship lanes crossing, you have storms you have i mean you have stuff that are hidden underwater that you hit like it's it's full of adventure trust me <laughs> but the hardest part was some came from somewhere psych, super psychological and very like triggering for me was the the captain of the of the boat you know who was giving us orders was full on alcoholic like really damaged alcoholic person damn and and if you go across the Atlantic for in text, it took us like around 20 days, you know. The last thing you want is an alcoholic captain on board. <laughs> especially, <A true> pirate. <laughs> uh, especially if there is no more alcohol on board. Uh, oh my and god. So so it was it was hard, you know, mm. uh, on that aspect. But at the same time, I had to I had my challenge. I wanted a challenge. I got my freaking challenge, you know. Uh, and so I told my wife when I came back, like, well, I wanted the slap in the face. I got it, you know, not physically, but <laughs> mentally. And, and what was hard is actually manage your expectations and your will and your the things that your inner strength while you're dealing as well with someone who's damaged on board. And we all had all the mm -hmm. crew. Thankfully, what happens that the crew solidified around each other and we were able to face that captain as a group, you know, not mutiny, but we're like, okay, well, how about you go in your room and sober up, you know, while we manage the boat, you know? Right. And, and, and I think there's something very powerful, but that it really gave me, it, that's actually an experience that gave me a lot of strength, actually. You're asking, that's one of them. It gave me the sensation that it made me realize that I was a very decent person, a very responsible person. And I never knew that about me. I never knew that about myself. I just realized I'm an adult. I'm a dad. I'm someone who takes responsibility. Yeah. I think that's the validation that I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, we should do a full podcast next time about about that trip, dude. I'm so curious because I, I could bring photos. Like hundreds I, of... could, I, I won't show the drunk captain because, of course, I don't want him to sue me or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, it, it was incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. uh like an adventure for sure. It's like yeah, I just I just couldn't fathom it. like what the fuck dude? Like that's that's a that's a crazy experience because there's, there's not many people do that. There's like people who do it solo which is like to me that's even like cra more, more crazy the amount of oh, danger you face. Solo that's a that's a whole I mean what we talked yeah. about what I did it's kind of like the baby version, you know, just to put things in perspective. It's like you know? the tourist version. <laughs> yeah, quote unquote. It's still, it's it's not easy, you know. No, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not diminishing version, um, no, 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 any I, of it I, at I'm, all. I'm saying like, even though, it, what I'm saying is that even though it was a baby version, I was, it was <laughs> hard for me, for me, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but solo, that's a whole different level. Uh, but the thing about the ocean 
is the last unruly place on the planet right now. It's the la- yeah. Unless you go to the Everest, maybe, or whatever. But the ocean is completely out of control in many ways. No, just, not just climate change or whatever. But legally, it's a place that's completely out of control. You know, there's so much yeah. traffic happening. There's so much, like, drug. There's so much, like, drug dealing. There's so much slavery. The biggest part of slavery, no, not everybody knows that, but the, you know where most of the slaves are nowadays? They're on, on, on fishing boats. You know, people mm. taken from places like either Philippines or Thailand, people are enslaved on fishing boats. The fish that you eat, the people, some people eat on a daily basis, comes from wow, slavery, modern slavery. And there's a great book. There's a great book that's been written by that. I highly recommend it. I can't remember the title or not, but, uh, but anyway, it's, uh, I can give you the, the name later. But uh, it's, it's legally, the ocean is a complete mess. It's far worse. It's because Mad Max. As, it's complete Mad Max. At a certain distance from the shore, laws are different depending on the country. And sometimes mm-hmm. there are even places where there's no laws, you know. Uh, so it's it's fascinating place, you know? Yeah. So yeah. you guys have to like navigate to make it safe too. Well, yeah, because you're on a sailboat, you know, you go where the wind tells you you're going, you know, uh, yeah. and, it, and it's a semi racing sailboat. So it's like, you don't sleep well, it's made of carbon. So it's like <laughs> okay. full on, like yeah. full on noisy all night long, you know, but it's also at the same time, like the movie, like the movie business, it's extremely exhilarating, you know, it's like you're on the edge for 18 days, basically, you know, 18, 20 days. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, let's definitely, I, I want to do a follow up on that. Like, I was a separate podcast, just, or just even like if we <laughs> just talk very privately, one. that would be fucking amazing. I, I, um, I took a day, I wrote a daily journal, you know, so, so okay. all the data is there. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. That sounds yeah. amazing. Uh, dude, we've been talking for like an hour and 40 already. Sorry. Like, I cannot believe the fucking time is flying. Uh, mm. we can probably wrap it up here. We have like some really good, good, really good subjects yeah. going on. Um, yeah. is there anything you want to like mention, promote, or like talk about before, before we close it off? Uh, Except I for mean, following say, your Instagrams, the socials, I, I'll just plug them in in the description for sure. Well, we're looking for a really good lighting artist at Funcom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's one. Uh, really good lighting artist, probably European based. Um, that's one one, uh, and then uh, and then yeah, we're 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 gonna release a Unreal short film uh, uh, through uh, the company that which I'm still the CEO of, uh, Pitch Dev Studios. Um, oh, cool. And and I'll be presenting it at Vertex in London in April. So, and it should be on YouTube um, in two months probably. Amazing! That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Cool. All right, dude uh super awesome to catch up man like it's well, uh i'm literally filled with happiness that was awesome i miss you yeah yeah same same we we need to like do like we're because we're just like basically fucking a continent apart like we're we're on the two opposite ends of the same continent <laughs> um big time but we need to figure out whether it's like gonna be you know like some conference or something yeah we'll, we'll figure it out figure out the way sounds great for to sure me. Yeah. all right dude yeah let's wrap it up Thanks, everybody, for listening. Peace. Peace. All right. Cool.